Joo, joo, vasta sitten sen jälkeen. Mä oon tässä ja näytän sitten vielä tota, ö, 10 minuuttia, 5 minuuttia. Ja... Joo, mä voin ihan taskua, jos mä istun tuolla, niin se ei törrätä. Se mun esitys on ilmeisesti, mä ymmärsin, 52, vai monelta se alkaa. se alustus. Mä, mä sanon sitten, että floor is... Good morning and a warm welcome to the second day of the Green Growth Forum in Lahti. Today we have three inspiring sessions ahead of us with some of the key players in the green finance, both in Finland and in Europe. My name is Unna Lehtipu and I'm moderating this event, so warmly welcome to join us here. Some of our speakers are live here in Lahti on stage uh, Lahti is the European Green Capital 2021, if you didn't know that. And some of the speakers would be online. Please note that you can also see and watch yesterday's keynote speeches on the event platform. They are readily waiting for you there. But now it's time to open the day. In the first session, we will ask how the green finance could promote the environment and investors and how to overcome the data gaps. There are, of course, many shades of green and green finance. Which shade should and would amplify and how to make it? This first session will be opened by Mr. Juha Soininen, who currently works as a postdoctoral researcher in the LUT, School of Business and Management. He will unveil the curtain of academic findings. What does it say about the impact of green finance on investments and environment? Second, we will widen up our perspective into green uh, investments in the light of the EU Commission's Green Deal. The speaker is Mr. Ville Skinnari, the Minister for Development, Cooperation and Foreign Trade Ministry for Foreign Affairs. According to Minister Skinnari, achieving green growth and carbon neutrality is the moonshot project for Finland and also a priority for the Finnish government. But there are still many obstacles to overcome. How to do it, we'll probably hear more insights about that. And finally, our third speaker will take us to the world of data. She is Mrs. Lena Mari Lähtema, president of CGI, Finland, Poland, and the Baltic operations. She will focus on uh, data challenges and reporting applications to the new regulation. The session will be followed by a panel discussion together with the panelists here on stage. Please, Juha. The floor is yours.
Thank you, Unna. It's a great honor to be here in Lahti today, representing Lappeenranta Lahti University of Technology here in my own hometown. The topic of my presentation is green finance, a snapshot of current academic research. So I want to give you a brief picture of how the green finance is covered at the uh, recent academic literature. So the green finance, a little bit its background in the academic literature. It's quite new field of research. We can say that it has existed only for one decade. And with this figure, I just want to illustrate you how the number of publications related to green finance has evolved during the last decade. So we can see that the number of publications was very low during the first years of the last decade. And during the couple of recent years, the number of publications or the research has been booming. Many different types of topics have been studied under the umbrella of green finance. And by clustering keywords, we can say that during the first stage of, of the green finance literature or, or the last decade, the topics that were covered in the studies were renewable energy, green electricity, and green supply chain management. Then, in the second stage, maybe from 2012 to 2018, the focus of the studies were on socially responsible investing, green buildings, and so on. And now, during the couple recent years, when the literature has been booming, the focus has been on carbon dioxide emissions, green paradox, government subsidies, and on green bonds. That can be said is the hot topic in the literature at the moment. And that is why I want to dedicate the rest of my 10 minutes to green bonds. As we have heard earlier today, the need for investment for low carbon projects and investment is really, really huge. And for example, as MacAskill et al has shown in their recent study, the amount that would be needed for investment in these low carbon investment projects is really staggering. And to meet that huge investment requirement, the green bonds are argued to be one of the best vehicles for both the public sector and also the private sector to finance the carbon infrastructure as they can provide an additional source of green financing to cover the needs in green investments. And the bonds are also argued to enable a more long-term financing for those green projects that could otherwise be difficult to get. Then the green bonds, they are pretty new instrument. They are normally a fixed income investment instrument and they are defined by the International Capital Market Association by that they are any type of bond where the proceeds will be exclusively used to finance some type of green projects. And the green bonds have been on the market a bit over or more than 10 years. As we can say that one of the first green bonds were issued by the World Bank in 2009. And after that, the global green bond market has emerged as a promising avenue for financing the transition to a lower carbon economy that is really needed. The growth of the green bond market has been really, really rapid. And that growth of the market has demonstrated a clear unified momentum towards pro-environmental preferences for both from issuers and also from investors. Then, a few words about the advantages that the green bonds can offer. Well, we have to first, of course, think the investors. Why would 
they be willing to invest their money into green bonds. From investors' point of view, several studies have, for example, shown that investing in green bonds offers sizable diversification benefits for the investors. So they are, it's possible to reduce the risk of their portfolio by investing into, into green bonds. Also, in some markets, the green bonds can offer tax incentives for investors. For example, here's an example of US markets where they have those tax exempt bonds where the investors are, or they don't need to pay income tax for the interest from the green bonds. Then, from the issuer's point of view, from the company's point of view that is issuing the green bond, what advantages do they get? Well, several studies have, have found that the investors in green bond markets are actually willing to pay a premium for a green bonds compared to a conventional bonds. That means that if we have two similar type of bond, another one is labeled as a green bond and the another is conventional bond. All cash flows are equal, risk is equal, but the investors are willing to pay a bit more higher price for the green labeled bond. That means that they are willing to give up a small fraction of their returns on the behalf of the environment. And from the company's point of view, this premium means a lower cost of capital. That is always, always a positive thing. So these findings support the view that these bonds actually can play a major role in greening the economy without penalizing financially the issuers, those parties that are issuing, issuing the green bonds. Then some words about the challenges that are related to green bonds, because although the results I briefly discussed earlier, they are rather positive. They give a rather positive picture of green bonds, but there are still some obstacles or challenges that needs to be tackled. One issue that I want to raise up that is already discussed in the previous sessions is the lack of clearly defined green bond standards. So the lack of defined or definitions that what is actually a green project, what type of properties should the green project possess to be really green. This lack of definitions means a risk for both the investors and also the issuers. Because in some cases it may happen that an issuer issues a bond for a project that is thought to be green and the investor buys that bond, but later on it happens that this green classification will be questioned. There, so there's a reputational risk for both the issuer and the investor. And to get rid of this risk at the moment, it requires a complex screening solutions. So a heavy administrative requirements or burden for both the issuer and then the screening burden for the investor. And of course, that is expensive. And one possible solution that is discussed in the literature to avoid this risk is the development of internationally recognized uniform standards for the assessment of green projects. So to define that what is really a green project. Then another issue that I wanted to raise, raise up here is then the lack of specification, the quantification of the environmental benefits of investment that are financed from the green bonds proceedings. So, because in most cases at the moment, there are only those conventional bond metrics that the investors can use when they are assessing the uh, green bonds. So there, lack, there is a lack of those environmental measures that, is, that are showing that what type of 
environmental benefits this particular green bond offers. And due to that, we can say that now the segment of the green bonds, they are losing its main benefit that is intended to support a globally important aim. And for this problem, uh, the solution that is discussed in the literature is that there should be some type of development of a universal environmental benefit framework. So that could be possibly a quantitative scale of assessment that shows the environmental yield of the project that is financed by the given bond. Because in the vast majority of those green projects, this could be captured in the volume of the reduction or avoidance of those harmful substance emissions. For example, how many tons of CO2 emissions can be avoided if this particular investment project is implemented and so on. So to conclude, my brief session is that in the light of current academic research, the green bonds are a promising tool to finance the green transition, but there are still some challenges that needs to be tackled. Thank you. Thank you, Juha. And next, Minister. Dear participants, dear friends, first of all, I would like to congratulate the organizers of this very important forum and thank you for invitation. I'm proud to be here uh, from Lahti, from Helsinki, from Finland. And I, I really believe that this is a great opportunity uh, to discuss and take stock where we are in achieving a strong and sustainable economic growth. Achieving uh, green growth and, and carbon neutrality is our moonshot project and a priority for the Finnish government. We want to achieve something that delivers high impact results, not only to Finland, but also to the rest of the world, to the Nordics, to the EU, but especially to the whole world. In short, we need to act local, but think global. Our biggest achievement has most likely been the development of carbon neutrality roadmaps together with the private sector. I really see this as a big innovation as far as climate actions from Finland. Having uh, municipalities and, and cities on board is a next step. And the work of Lahti has been uh, ex a good example, great example, not just to Finland, but, but to the rest of the world and Europe especially. Compared to, to many other countries, Finland is ready and set for lift off. Um, the work done in, in the past decades to advance sustainable development is, is now bearing a fruit. This is not big talk, it, it is a fact. In the Sustainable Development Report of 2021, Finland is number one in the total progress towards achieving all 17 sustainable development goals. Of course, there are many elements in which Finland also has to improve, but still Finland is a real forerunner. Achieving this competitive edge is the result of the hard work and commitment by Finnish businesses, public sector and civil society and of course, at the end of the day, people. However, in such circumstances, we must not let uh, your guard down. It is of utmost importance that we push on to achieve even more. In this regard, it is a great pleasure to acknowledge that the city of Lahti is leading by example. And I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate 
Lahti once again for its success as European Green Capital for 2021. Dear friends and colleagues, um, our government is moving forward with the Sustainable Growth Program for Finland and its effective implementation. And I really want to underline the word implementation. As you are well aware, the program will reduce emissions by boosting investments and research as well as development activities. We want to accelerate a sustainable economy and, and create opportunities for long-term economic growth and to do it together with the private sector and the academia. We need to make sure that investments scale up to produce global results. And in order to do that, we have to across the traditional borders between municipalities, regions and even nations. And this is a big thing to do, even in Europe. Innovations are the backbone of new growth, but at the same time we must create new channels of financing to help them reach their full potential. Finland aims to create a new 10 billion euro in investment fund for research, development and innovations that will accelerate green growth and also digitalization and of course innovation, and of course, most importantly, make the impact and also make the commercial impact and well-being for Finns. This will secure sustainable growth for the whole decade. We invite all investors to join from the Nordics, Europe and at the global level. Major public funding, both national and from the EU, will be directed towards promoting a green transition, balanced combination of, of reforms and investments supports sustainable economic growth. However, public funding is not sufficient to achieve our ambitious objectives. Therefore, private investment is and will be essential to our common goals and endeavours. The long-term business case for green growth is undeniable. Nevertheless, in, in the short and medium term, green investment can be risky due to their upfront nature. The presentations and discussions at this Green Growth Forum will provide in valuable insights and lessons learned to our efforts to mitigate risks and, and remove obstacles to such investments. For example, in order to make sure an international le level playing field for these investment, the question of how sustainable investing and financing is standardized and made comparable is very important. Dear friends and participants, for me, as the minister responsible, responsible for trade policy, one of the key aims of the Sustainable Growth Programme is to open new markets for Finnish companies and to help them to gain positions at the leading edge. In practice, this means that Finland, and Finland is and, and remains open to foreign investments that Finnish companies have access to international markets with their products and services and that their investments abroad will be treated fairly and protected. However, at the same time, we need to produce more comprehensive solutions to the market and to the financing sector. In other words, we have to be horizontal, we have to be holistic. I'm also the minister responsible for development cooperation and it's so important that Finland and Finnish companies contribute to sustainable development and sustainable investments globally. And here I would like to highlight uh, FinFund, Finland's development finance, finance institution, 
uh, FinFund can be described as an impact investor that invests in developing countries, particularly in, in Africa. It has invested, for example, in renewable energy such as the Lake uh, Turkana, Kenya's largest wind farm. Further, FinFund is the leading investor in sustainable forestry in Africa amongst development finance institutions, paving the way for other investors to follow. Development finance play an important role in creating a strong profile for Finland as a leading country in the area of sustainable development. We also want the United Nations to be bold and aspirational in leveraging innovation and digital technology for reaching the SDGs. One of the ways we are pursuing this goal is by hosting and supporting a growing number of UN technology and innovation programs in Finland. We recently announced the arrival of two UNICEF innovation hubs on innovative financing and learning to, compl to complement the existing UN family here in Finland. These hubs will provide a solid platform for cooperation with the private sector as well as the academia. When it comes to attracting sustainable investments, Finland stability, high level uh, schools and predictability of our investment climate are crucial. This is especially true for R&D investments, which are often made upfront and take time to start producing returns. It's so important that we further streamline permit, proce per permit uh, 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 procedures, not only to facilitate sustainable investment projects, but also to enable speedy development of green innovations. And of course, digitalization must be there, and it is there already. In addition, as the international competition for sustainable investments gets tougher and tougher, we need to become even more effective in marketing Finland as an attractive and sustainable in investment destination. In other words, we need to pull up the great innovations from the startup sector, the SMEs, to, to work as an entity, as a system level change maker. Finally, yet importantly, ensuring an international level playing field for Finnish companies is of utmost importance. We need to work more effectively towards eliminating obstacles to sustainable goods and services, both home and abroad, while we at the same time promote and protect outward Finnish investments. To conclude, I really look forward to, to the forum providing us with new insights to do even better in our efforts to make sure that the moonshot is not in the dark, but meets its objective, sustainable development and sustainable growth. Thank you so much for your attention. See you soon in Lahti. Bye bye. Thank you, Minister Ville Skinnari. And the next on stage or on the floor would be Lena Mari Lähtemä from CGI Finland. Thank you, Unna. A very interesting uh, presentation from Juha Soininen and, and Minister Ville Skinnari. It's great to be here, not, not in Lahti, but on, online. So, um, EPP, EPPC report just published on uh, August is alarming. Uh, global warming has been faster than expected and, and consequences are seen all over the world. Uh, this is why uh, we call all uh, to take immediate action. CGI's information technology services company operating globally 
Uh, we are based in Canada, having over 76,000 employees. Here in Finland, our over 3,500 employees provide services extensively across all sectors in, in society. Uh, we are well positioned uh, to support and deliver uh, services uh, for local government too, and close to all municipalities. Um, CTI has had corporate social responsibility high on its agenda for years. As part of the, the corporate social responsibility, addressing climate change is uh, in our focus. For preventing uh, climate change, we see a financial sector part of the, the solution. Uh, EU Green Deal, uh, EU uh, taxonomy, number of current and forthcoming direct direct activities have ignited a remarkable system exchange in Europe. Uh, also, all keynotes uh, today will validate uh, that a proof of change is underway. It's, it's great that Europe has been able to take a very proactive role. Uh, the, the key uh, associating climate, uh, climate uh, change with economic decision making uh, by rules and, and regulations. Mechanism is, is known uh, from other regulations such as anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism finance by halting and preventing flow of funds to harmful activities lead to gradual abating of the unwanted operations. We will start from environment and proceed uh, to social and governance issues. Uh, the urgency comes not from climate uh, change, but from the, the fact that regulations come into force and regulations should be followed appropriately. And that is uh, the Nordic culture, uh, may coordinate act when it is time. So now we have climate change and mechanism agreed as seen today and in, in other discussions, we have plenty of open questions ranging uh, from interpretation to practicalities. Uh, for CGI conclusion is however clear. Uh, we Europeans have entered to a point where concrete action starts of the scale of European societies and hopefully globally as well. So as, as Ville Skinner stated in, in his presentation, so if you can take the, the next dia. Uh, CTI's contribution uh, will, will be to do what we know best. Uh, that is building digital infrastructure that helps all institutions to run their operations. Uh, in a way, climate change and, and all other ESG aspects are taken into account. Naturally, we also do the best we can uh, to make as sustainable services as, as possible. Uh, interestingly, regulations apply to financial institutions and another uh, directive, CSRB, large corporations employing more than 500 persons. For all or others, like small and medium-sized companies, local government, other institutions and households, the requirements will hit indirectly uh, as banks uh, will start asking ES ESG-related information. Uh, uh, slide uh, three. Uh, Europe has reads, um, reads a stance uh, where financial institutions will take emissions in, into account and part of the, the their reporting when, they, when making financial decisions. However, uh, in practice, Europe is run 
by small and medium sized companies after all. Now, these in entities will not have capability to measure their greenhouse gas emissions or other ESG information for that matter. Now, there will be need to get whatever data that could be used for financial decision making. The whole data infrastructure needs to be built. For, for banks, this is concrete challenge. Let me give an example. So availability of ESG data is limited and even non-existent when it comes to uh, e EG uh, uh, emissions on in entity level. Banks can ask the data from their clients. When, when clients do not have the, the data, uh, banks, they need to, to use external data sources to complement uh, missing data. Uh, currently, this data is based on proxies and best estimations due to, to lack of infrastructure. To make this concrete, it can be compared to financial data processing, uh, bookkeeping, and infrastructure in, in the society. Over the centuries, we have developed rules and means how to handle economic reporting and, and transactions. Uh, next, we'll uh, report ESG indicators as we do financial reporting today. And four. Um, in in conclu and conclusion, uh, there are will, uh, political commitment, uh, re regulation and demand for ESG in, in the society. Regulation drives uh, the change. In order to succeed, accurate, simple and trustworthy data on ESG is needed. Um, it's a CGI score business and main contribution to build needed digital infrastructure. We active, actively consider solutions how to do it. First, implement, implementation projects have started with City of Lahti uh, and, and Municipality Finance PLC, where we build their uh, ESG competence and as an official partner of European Green Capital Lahti, we want to help our clients to, to decrease carbon emissions to, and to achieve sustainable targets. Time for action is now. Thank you. Thank you, Lena Mari. And warm thank to all the speakers for your contribution. We'll continue together here on stage with Juha and on screen with Lena Mari. Minister Ville Skinner is uh, not able to join us here, but we will also reflect on his speech. So let's start with that. Uh, as we heard, the Finnish government is moving forward with the Sustainable Growth Programme for Finland in emissions reduction by boosting investment and research as well as development activities. But now as Finland embarks on this strategy, um, what do you see, what would be the most important steps from the academic perspective? Well, <clears throat> from business side, I, I'm not any engineer to any extent, but for example, as I mentioned in my presentation, that there's a lack of measurement of, of those green bonds. Uh, that could be, for example, one, one area where universities could, could partic participate and develop such measures that can capture the environmental benefits of, of the green finance instruments. Mm. So, so there are many shades of green. Yes. So, uh, would you, Lena Marie, would you have some greetings to the government here? So I believe that the kind of uh, activities we are doing, doing in EU are uh, also helping our, our industries. I have discussed with many of our 
uh, big manufacturer clients, for example, and we, we uh, believe that uh, these um, uh, regulations will actually support our industries because um, it makes us kind of comparable, better comparable, and, and at least we believe that in, in Finland we are already on the greener than in, in many other countries. So it helps us uh, with the competition if, if we are really um, able to define and write um, metrics and regulations and, and really work with EU or in, in EU. So, so I believe that um, you know, these regulations actually will, will help our industries in, in, in Finland. Uh, the Member of Parliament, uh, European Parliament, Sirpa Pietikäinen, earlier addressed here in the forum that the solutions should be science-based, not politically compromised, to really meet up or um, to the challenge or the requirements. As a member of academia, that was a really, really delightful to hear that from Mrs. Pietikäinen saying that, and I, I agree that. Mm. She also encouraged um, us to lobby, because this issue is really important. Do you think that the academia is still lobbying enough to make them heard in a proper way? I think that there is plenty of, plenty of room for actions, and then it's the, for example, I can throw the ball to our rector in, in, this, in this issue. Yes. Um, um, the green bond market, you already earlier said in your presentation, so it's a promising or great avenue for financing a transition to the green, uh, a lower carbon economy. Would you please grasp it a bit more on? Tell, me, tell us more about it, your view. Well, at the moment, the market is growing really rapidly, but it's still really small compared to the whole bond market, so there is still plenty of room, room for green bonds in the market and, of course, the obstacles I mentioned need to be tackled so that the market can grow even more and, and gain popularity. And, of course, that is then, as I mentioned, now the investors are willing to pay a bit more higher price for the green level bond. But to what extent in the global scale the investors are willing to give up a small fraction of their returns for, for environment. That's, a, that's an issue. And there, I guess, should be also like better ways to prove the impact as well. That's, that's true. So not only the word green would yes. be enough yes. for future investors. You also mentioned that bonds could be potentially play a major role in greening the economy without penalizing financially the issuers. What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean that, that now, if the investors are willing to pay the premium. That means that the uh, money is then, or the cost of capital is lower for the issuers, the companies that are issuing the bonds. So they are actually getting cheaper funding from the green bonds compared to the conventional bonds in the light of the research. So that means that it's not penalizing them to issue those green bonds. Hmm. And Lena Mari, more and more regulation is created and it requires even more data collecting and already by now, so I think many investors say, say that this is too much already. Do you share the concern about this? Yeah, I, I believe that there are, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really kind of difficult to keep the, the balance uh, between standards and kind of heavy regulations. So. So uh, we should find ways to, to really uh, uh, calculate the, the environmental uh, impacts in a, in a way that also these, uh, these smaller and medium companies can join, because even if they are not required now at this point to, to uh, kind of uh, collect the data and have the formal reporting, uh, uh, in the future, it's, it's, it's so that it, when they want to, to get the kind of financing for their investments or clients or such, they need to prove anyway uh, 
uh, that, uh, that their investments and products and services are, are uh, following, following the sustainable uh, uh, kind of principles and, and it's, it's completed. So, so it will lead anyway to the situation that we need to, to prove uh, the uh, kind of somehow. So it's better to have the kind of standard solutions and standard uh, regulations than kind of uh, have the kind of uh, not non-comparable uh, reportings, etc. So. So uh, this is just something um, it will it will come and and I believe that we will build build up. We are now in very early stages, but we will have the, the solutions also to to help and support the the companies and and, and local governments, for example. Mm. Uh, Sirpa Pietikin also in in her earlier speech um, proposed that we should have a single global database uh, which is for uh, open for everyone but not for uh, financial information but also for small and medium-sized companies how does it sound would it be possible a yeah. global one yeah i believe i i believe that at least at least we should have the kind of database how to calculate calculate the uh, kind of impacts in 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 environment so i believe also that uh, kind of uh, our universities and studies could help building building this kind of solutions open for for use so so when we get the kind of basic data so we can then based on that calculate easily for example the the emissions do you, have, do you want to comment on that? Will it be well, that sounds possible? that sounds really good. And as a researcher, we we love data. But then, on the other hand, I know also really closely the like the everyday life of a small and medium-sized entrepreneur. And then, what is the burden that they can take in in reporting? There's a there's a trade-off. Hmm. How do investors could manage data gaps, Lena Mari? So <laughs> difficult, difficult uh, question. So firstly, I, I would like to, to mention in some of the, the studies, it's not only only uh, uh, because they they want to to follow up the, the regulations, for example. Uh, the companies and and why the investors uh, kind of read these reports. So most of the investors are actually actually uh, seeing these uh, standards uh, as kind of preventing the, the risk uh, because they see that that whenever um, the company they are investing in is following up kind of good good standards. Uh, uh, having low em emissions, good governance and social responsibility, it's less risky also to invest in, in such companies. And, <clears throat> and, and due to that, it's really important that uh, the data is reliable and, and uh, <laughs> the, how, to, how to kind of fill the, the gaps in the in the data it's really difficult uh, question so i believe that the, the investors read carefully all the the uh, company reports and 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 not only these kind of formal numbers and i believe that um, that for example on top of these um, uh, 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 environmental uh, aspects they are following up also the kind of governance and, and social uh, things, even they are not yet part of the, the regulation. Collecting reliable data has become a big issue during COVID-19. For example, due diligence is pretty difficult to make if there are very, very strict travel restrictions. And this may not be the only time during our time. So how do you see this for future data collecting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes it makes 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 life life difficult. But 
I don't actually believe that in this area it, it's uh, that uh, challenging because it's really about kind of private, uh, private personal data, the GDPR, and, and, and we collect a lot of information related to finance, etc. already now, and, and at least the end results of, of these um, kind of uh, bookkeeping keepings and other finance reporting, it's open, open data. So, so I don't see that so big problem. I believe that, and I think it's already in the legislation that uh, that um, these uh, uh, reports will be audited uh, as as well. So, so the kind of uh, data collected uh, uh, doesn't need to be that uh, public. Hmm. Um. About investing, you ha how big is the risk that if you, you would buy a green bond that later would be classified as something less sustainable or uh, as, uh, as, uh, as earlier mentioned here, the taxonomy, for example, the regulation will tighten by time. Do you see as a risk for investor? Well, of course, that is also one, one issue that is raised up in the literature. It's so-called green default, that what happens if the green project fails. With normal bond default is that when the issuer cannot pay back, they cannot pay back the coupons and, and all. But what happens if the issuer of a green bond is able to pay back the, the money that is uh, borrowed, but then the green project fails? Then there's a, also an issue that needs to be uh, discussed and maybe uh, develop some type of framework for that. Do you have some perspective, Lena Marga, Do you have some perspective on this? So I'm not I'm not expert in in this area, but but of course um, there is a lot lot of kind of a lot of things we need to, to measure and, and make decisions on before before we have all the kind of uh, uh, legislation and and as kind of processes in, in place in this area. So, so we are just in the, in the starting point and, and already that we have started uh, starts to, to impact um, the behavior of the, the companies and, and also the, the public sector organizations. Mm. We can see it. So, Lena Marie, what do you think is the most important action to make these processes smoother from your perspective? I, I think the, it's, it's really important that the kind of taxonomies and, and how we are building the, the regulation is, is fair and sustainable and, and that the, not only the kind of big companies and big financial uh, organizations can follow up them. So not too complicated, but fair, fair and, and balanced. So, so not, not an easy, easy area, but, but um, if, if uh, EU is doing good work, I believe that all the, the parties will benefit. And you, you, how, you also set up a universal framework. What would it be? Well, that is something that I, I haven't thought further on. So unfortunately, at the moment, I cannot answer for that. Yes. But thank you, for both of you. This was a really dis good discussion. We got more information. Thank you for all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice seminar. Thank you.